Hey folks, welcome back to DCS. So, up ahead, about six miles in front of me, there's a frog foot, but EWR has told me that there's also a fish bed. Even closer than that, within four miles to my left. I actually just saw him on the recording, but I didn't spot him at the time. I decided to go for the frog foot because the MiG doesn't seem to be pressing me. I didn't see any missile launches or anything. And I actually know where this guy is. If I abandon him to go for the other guy, then there's a chance that I'll never find this guy again either, and then I'll be blind on both fronts. So through my uh, climb up to maintain energy to pull on to the frog foot, I actually saw him merge with the fish bird, who didn't seem to have got the EWR call to find me and you know down like a gift horse in the mouth I decided to go after the Mutonion. Clearly the larger threat than a frog foot and get him out of the fight now and then I can deal with the frog foot a little bit more easily. So here I'm actually intentionally flying into the sun in case the Frogfoot has my 6, and he does. It, his missile seems to track anyway if I do pop some flares, but that's a tactic I tend to use if I lose situational awareness, I'll head towards the sun, and then if anyone does end up pulling into my 6, I'll have a chance of spoofing a missile even if I don't know it's there. Frogfoot's actually a really, really annoying thing to fight. If they start pulling with you, then you have to assume they've dropped all of their external tanks and ordnance and everything else. And if they have a clean wing with just R60s on the tips, they can actually hold with you through pretty much every manoeuvre apart from straight vehicles with speed or or dives, you know, because their top speed's much lower than yours. But if you start turning with them, which you obviously have to do to be able to engage them, you have to be really careful about how you play it because they don't really bleed energy. They bleed a lot less than the F5 does, that's for sure. And they get it back far faster than they have any right to. So whilst using our higher top speed we can play the vertical, if we do it for too long and we get slow, they'll actually get fast quicker than we will. And they'll hold that speed better than we do as well. So I'm having to continually flip between using my flaps and raising and lowering them to get speed back or to help my turn rate and really thinking hard about when and why I'm doing it. Right here I've intentionally bled my speed right down because if he's faster he'll have a much larger turning circle and I was hoping that by staying inside his turning circle I could get him slow and whilst I still have allergy to play with if I get him slow then I can actually capitalise on that and get one over on him. However, through all that, there was an EWR call from MiG-21 six miles away, who thankfully hasn't seen me. We do actually get some hits in there, and I never see him again. I lost him at the merge, I don't know where he went, I couldn't find him. But I, I just ignore him after this, he never comes back and causes me any grief. I don't know if I actually got the kill or not, but we only got two hits. One was like Santa fuselage and one was like on the tailpipe. Maybe I did some damage to his engine, I honestly don't know. Obviously through that the frog foot got the upper hand. So what I did was climb up through the clouds to break line of sight, because he doesn't have a radar or anything that he can use to acquire me visually if his visibility is limited. I dive out and he ends up finding me before I find him, so we kind of end up back in the same situation we were in before. So I'm popping my flaps down in this situation to pull a little bit harder and I'm trying to just get him to turn with me to the point where he's going to slow and here I was kind of hoping for a manoeuvre kill. I knew he had quite a lot of speed because he just dived down after me and I pulled underneath him in the hope that he'd try and follow it through and you know pancake it but he just, just managed to recover it. And now I'm just 
climbing vertically upwards. Another tactic that I sometimes use is that I'll die on this hill, right, but it's way, way harder to hit a target that's flying in a dead straight line directly away from you than it is to hit a deflection shot where you can just fire a burst and let them fly into it. Especially with the 30 mils on the frog foot, his gun sight's awful. It's really, really bad. It bounces around all over the place, and the static one, the aiming pepper isn't accurate. So I just went up there, even though we were in relatively equal energy states, in the hope that his aim would just not be enough to, to hit me. I also knew that he'd already used both of his missiles on me. If you don't know that they, whether they've used their missiles or not, then obviously that would be a really stupid thing to do. But I actually managed to make him lose visual, because he stalls out and, and flops. And even though I was in front of him when he flopped, he didn't see me, so I'm going to call it a win. And I'm absolutely not <laughs> going to try for a gun kill in a situation where I can't miss out kill a frog foot because they are just that annoying. Like, on par with the MiG-19 levels of annoying, in my opinion. So again, I was running into the sun there to deny this MiG-19 a shot with his missiles. I knew he was back there somewhere, but I couldn't see him. And I climbed up whilst I was running back to base so that I've got altitude to play with. Thankfully, a friendly F5 came in, and that mopped him up for me. So my fuel state is now really, really bad. I'm on fumes, I'm on the dirt, I was low speed, I was looking to land. And then a friendly F5 and a frog foot are within like 6 miles of me, and I think, well, I'm going to have to help this guy out, because he just saved me from the MiG-19. Even though I'm really not in a position to do it. So whilst he keeps the, uh, the frog foot busy, like turning on the deck, and he does it way too much by the way, you'll see how slow he ends up getting later. I just boom and zoom him. I climb up and I try and cut his turn at an angle that will give me a shot, but because he's continually turn fighting with the F5, it's very difficult. I'm sort of having to guess where he's going to reverse his turn based on where the friendly is and obviously I'm only really paying attention to him, not my teammate because I can't afford to switch who I'm looking at in this game because spotting is so bad. On YouTube, this guy might as well just be invisible, I imagine. But here I feel like I'm pulling down on his six, he's reversing his turn, that should help me out but by the time I actually get close enough to take a shot the frogfoot can rate fire so well, and the gun sight really lets me down there. I do get some hits on, on his right wing, but that's one of those situations where I kind of wish I'd just used the static sight rather than the gyro sight. I have been trying to use the radar gun sight more since um, my last video. I'm determined to figure out like best use cases and when it is more beneficial to use than when it isn't. But um, right now, if, if I need to make the shot, I'll tend to just not use the radar sight at all. And I feel like it should be the other way around. So I'm getting dragged into a trap here of just turning continually. And my friendly, the other F5, is turning with him in the same direction. So we're both... This guy's basically defeating both of us at the same time. With only one counter move. So you see that my friend is over there pulling left, I'm behind him pulling left. If one of us had reversed our turn instead and taken him one circle, it might have forced him to change up his geometry and then one of us might have been able to get a shot. I expect that the hits that I just got would have done more than they did. Like you saw that black smoke pouring out of his wing. And now I've actually lost my left engine. Um, my fuel's run out. I don't actually know if you can put the cross feed on. Does that mean that you keep both your engines running continually? Because I haven't experimented with it, but that sounds like it'd be pretty useful. Thankfully this airbase was very, very, very close, so you can see how low my fuel state is right now. Literally on fumes, like the fumiest of fumes. And I'm intentionally coming in way too hot for this landing, because I just cannot afford to do a go-around. That's how bad my fuel state is. So I'm just floating it down the runway until my speed gets below like 150 knots and then I'll touch down after that and uh, so there's 150 and that's touchdown and I'm gonna use my parachute 
just in case for some reason I end up rolling off or screwing it off. I don't want to be moving for longer than I need to in case I mess it up. And we'll cut the shoot. I don't know why I came to a stop actually, but in revving the engine up, I actually ran out of fuel, so I'm just stuck here in the runway now. But but yeah. Not a bad little soy. Hope you enjoyed that folks. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to see more, then like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.